Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll Channel. I have another donation deck list today. This is from Franklin. Franklin is a local Pittsburgh combo monster. Uh, I know him from playing Ad Nauseam Tendrils in Legacy. He's also the first person I ever saw play a Surge Node deck. He's not afraid of a brew, and he has submitted a wild one today. It's a modern deck, and this is Gravestorm. If you're not familiar with Gravestorm, that's okay, because it's only been printed on one card ever. Unless there's something in a commander set. I should probably fact check my stuff before I just say it. But to my knowledge, Bitter Ordeal is the only card with Gravestorm. And it's a three mana sorcery that's search target player's library for a card and exile it. Then that player exile then that player shuffles their library. And it has Gravestorm, which is this spell is copied as a triggered ability when you put it on the stack for each permanent put into a graveyard this turn. And you can choose new targets for the copies. So how do we win with that? Obviously we're trying to exile the opponent's deck. How do we get 30, 40 cards in the graveyard in a turn? We play eggs. <laughs> so eggs was an old modern deck. It was based around Second Sunrise, a card that is now banned uh, that uh, puts all your permanents that died this turn back into play. But Faith's Reward is still legal. It costs one more than Second Sunrise does. Second Sunrise is white, white, one, and Faith's Reward is white, three. But return to the battlefield all permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there this turn. But they're from the battlefield this turn. You can't mill yourself. So, And then Open the Vaults is a six mana version of kind of the same thing. Uh, return all artifact enchantment cards from all graveyards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So basically what we're trying to do here is use our eggs, aka Chromatic Sphere, Chromatic Star, Conjurer's Bauble, Elsewhere Flask. Uh, an egg is an affectionate nickname for an artifact, a cheap artifact that draws a card. So we have uh, 15 eggs in the deck, plus Edge of Autumn as an honorary egg, and Lotus Bloom and reshape to get Lotus Bloom. Like basically, you have to have a Lotus Bloom, and then you crack your Lotus Bloom, you crack a couple eggs, draw a couple cards, cast face reward, and then they all come back. And then you do that again and again and again for fun and profit until you're able to bitter ordeal your opponent out of the game. Psychogenic Probe is here uh, to it's a bit of a shortcut. Whenever a player shuffles their deck, Psychogenic Probe deals two damage to them. And Bitter Ordeal, your opponent shuffles their deck between each copy resolving. So we can actually shortcut and only exile 10 cards with Psychogenic Probe. You don't have to do the whole 40. And I mean, that's the deck. Uh, there's not a lot to describe about the plan. The gameplay is going to be intricate. Uh, there's a lot of fun little lines here. Uh, I think the most exciting one to me is Ghost Quarter plus Lotus Bloom plus Mystic Sanctuary, plus a Chromatic Sphere or Star, plus Faith Reward is an infinite loop. I mean, it's a five-card loop, so don't get too excited. But uh, if the eggs deck is churning, we are going to assemble it eventually. So you Ghost Quarter your Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, so now Mystic Sanctuary is in the graveyard. If there's a basic still in your deck, you get to search it out. You sack the Lotus Bloom. You sack the Sphere to draw a card. You cast Face Reward, you get them all back. Mystic Sanctuary puts Face Reward on top of your deck. You draw Mystic, you draw Face Reward with the Chromatic Star, and you Ghost Quarter your Mystic Sanctuary, Sack Lotus Bloom, do it all again. So there is an actual deterministic infinite loop here, and there's plenty of ways to gain value along the way, even if we're not looping infinitely. Sideboard, just some normal stuff. Uh, so you can play around discard, play around counter spells and remove problematic permanence. And Altar of the Brood is an alternate win con. Whenever a permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills a card. So that's just another thing you can do, uh, another way you can win the game. So let's get into this. All right, we are on the play in round one against a Yorion deck, which is probably a good sign because Yorion decks tend to be kind of slow. 
Uh, they're they're Yorian is like the the king or queen. I don't know the gender of Yorian. The uh, the boss of mid range decks. Uh, so that should be good for our combo deck. Uh, Franklin instructed me that I probably want to mulligan any hand that doesn't make Lotus Bloom, whether ha through Bloom or Reshape, uh, at least on seven and six. Once we're down to five cards, we have to start keeping clunkers. But okay, this hand has Lotus Bloom and it has two Reshapes. So that's a lot of Lotuses. I'm going to keep this. And I think I send one of the Reshapes to the bottom. I'm sure I don't need three Lotus, and the Open the Vaults might be helpful. All right, so reshape to the bottom. Keep this. Now we find out what flavor of Yorion they are. Suspend my Bloom, and I'm going to fetch Hallowed Fountain. Get my blue and white mana under me, and then Chromatic Star. Hopefully we just draw a land, specifically a blue source, and we can reshape next turn. But if we don't, we have star to redraw, and then we can cast Elsewhere Flask if any of the top two cards of our deck is a mana source. Plus Lotus Bloom is on the way. Uh, sphere. All right, so I'm going to pop my star. Hopefully we find a land. All right, didn't find a land. Bummer. Uh, let's hope they don't ponza me. I guess even if they have stone rain, I can draw a card off Edge of Autumn, which is not what I want to be doing. Don't get me wrong. But it is a thing I can do. Uh-oh. This is the stone rain mana. Please don't do it. Don't do me like that. Are you shitting me? This card is just in your main deck? <laughs> Can I beat this? I think I have, like, literally no outs to this in the main. Uh, I guess I'll play a little bit. Like... What am I playing towards at this point? Maybe I have to like bitter ordeal them all in one turn. I'm actually going to make green off this. So I can cast Edge of Autumn if I draw it. All right. Uh, put a card in your graveyard on the bottom of your library and draw a card. Yikes. Okay, so... They have a turn two main deck Eidolon of Rhetoric against me, who is already missing land drops. This is not a good start. Nice 80 card Yorion deck with the, the perfect hand against me. Okay, so Lotus Bloom's going to come in, and that's my spell for the turn. This is one of those that's magic kind of moments. All right, Yorion's in their hand. Maybe I'll draw a land now. Okay, Bitter Ordeal is like kind of a win condition. Wow. That's fucked up. I don't approve of that. <laughs> Uh, so if I can get a bunch of crap in my graveyard and cast, I guess that's not even true. Like I can't even like open the vaults into bid or deal because that's still two spells. I, I guess I have to like open the vaults, pass the turn, untap, sock all my baubles and bid or deal them. And having probe in play would be a big help when I do it. All right, just the eight mana, four or five flying. It's going to be pretty good here, embarrassingly enough. Oh my god. 
Continuing to miss all these land drops is just the worst. All right, I found a land, kind of. So they're attacking for five. We're on a three turn clock. I don't think we're going to be able to get where we need to go all in three turns. Plus at this point, they're holding up probably Coco or Cord or something, like something that'll mess me up. Glass pool mimic. Is that going to copy Eidolon? Or, yeah, okay. Joke's on you, I couldn't remove the first one. Alright, now we're drawing lands. Though, it's definitely too late. Uh, I think I have to play my Elsewhere Flask. So I Flask this turn. Next turn I open the Vaults. And then it's still too late. So I guess the option now is I could bid or ordeal them to look at their deck, but then they also know what my win con is. Right now I could be like ad nauseum. Though the elsewhere flask, no, the eggs give it away. I'm not ad nauseum. So I yeah, I can cast bid or ordeal to look at their deck list. Or I could just not do that. All right, I'm just going to concede. Well, that was brutal in a variety of directions. Uh, we will do better than that this time, I hope. All right, uh, Echoing Truth and Teferi definitely coming in. Just need to be able to answer permanence. And Altar of the Brood, probably not the alternate win cut I'm looking for against the 80-card Yorion deck. That also is just like soft hate against Bitter Ordeal. Uh, I'm not sure if I can go for Pact of Negation, though I might have to. No, because like Pact of Negation is only good for protecting you on a combo turn, and Dispel can hit Coco or Cord the same kind of way. But those cards are also just bad uh, against the creature half of the deck. So I'll bring in these things. I'm, I'm probably going to need the Psychogenic Probe to reasonably win this match. And I think this is how I'm going to present my deck. Uh, Franklin also said Edge of Autumn is basically the first cut in sideboarding almost all the time. Okay, here is my deck. I can answer an Eidolon now. Now they're going to be all stacked up, though. The uh... Okay, so this hand does not have Lotus Bloom, but it does have three Sleight of Hands and a Chromatic Star. I'm actually going to keep this against Medical Advice. Franklin said Mulligan 7s and 6s that don't have Lotus Bloom, but this amount of selection is not bad. I probably should have led on Chromatic Star. No, I don't think so, because if I found Bloom, I could have suspended it this turn. It's probably fine. So they're going to have Collector Oof. They're going to have Eidolon. They're going to know that those are good against me now. So I'm going to play my Sphere, and I'm going to pop it for Blue to cast Sleight of Hand. I am just trying to shred through my deck at this point and find the the bloom. Like, I need the bloom and the payoff. I could have ghost quartered this Utopia Sprawl also, but I, I don't think that's the best use of my mana. All right, we have a bloom. Star. A pop star for blue to cast sleight of hand. I 
I found a reshape. That's nice. So I have a second bloom coming. Now I'm looking for a, a face reward. Ooh. All right. Yeah, I think the first face reward is more important than the third lotus bloom. So I'll take that. Suspend this. Mystic Sanctuary is in play. Let's go. Okay. Uh, now my goal is to find counter hate. Like, uh, at some point soon, they're going to get their company or their court online, and I'm going to have to deal with a hate creature. And it's probably going to happen before I get this Lotus Bloom into play. So, small point of technicality here. Uh, my opponent scryed two to the bottom and then fetched. Like, if you're going to cast preordain or omen of the sea which has a lot of the same text as preordain you want to fetch before you do that so your scries get maximum value oh god beginning of your end step you may sacrifice another enchantment if you do search your library for a creature card oh god okay so the uh eidolon is coming right now actually so omen converts into eidolon probably which sucks because I was about to get my second Lotus Bloom right now. Uh, we're looking for the the Echoing Truth or the Teferi at this point. And I'm not sure how quickly this kills me either. Oh, Renegade Rallyer. Okay. They didn't go for Eidolon right away. That That's good for me. I can reshape into a Lotus this turn then. But I mean, this engine is very sweet. Uh, another bloom. All right. Suspend you. Cast Chromatic Star. And then reshape Chromatic Star into a bloom. X is zero. Don't mind if I do. Get Lotus Bloom. Um, so Chromatic Star died this turn. What do, if I face reward this turn? That doesn't do anything. So I'm just going to put this into play tapped and pass the turn. So next turn I can start doing Ghost Quarter stuff. Uh, maybe <laughs> we'll see. So they're, they're almost certainly going to get the idol on this turn. Maybe I should have uh, bit ordealed for like two or three last turn. Just like a mini ordeal to get their hate pieces out of their deck. Now that they have this tutor online. Hopefully I just find Teferi or Echoing Truth, and it's not a problem. Uh, this deck is so cool. <laughs> I'm jealous of what they're doing. No! Are you shitting me? Oh, wow, Th this is hateful. They have so much hate. This this eighty card green deck just ever man they've managed to interact with me in some meaningful way at every point of the curve, the whole time. Yeah, I don't I already don't think I can win this game. Yeah, I'm actually going to concede to the scavenging ooze already. So, all right, uh, a very rough rough lineup against that particular deck uh they they came to beat me their engine got online before mine did but we were very close in both of those games I, we win game one pretty easily if they don't have idol on and then uh we were pretty close that game too but their their engine shut us down too well on to the next one all right back on the play in round two so this one's interesting uh i have the lotus bloom but i don't have a land uh Franklin did not give me any pointers about this situation. Like, is Lotus Bloom more important than everything? Oh, I assume you have to mulligan this. All right. 
We've got a hand that does it all. Get you a hand that <laughs> has lands and spells. So I'm keeping Lotus Bloom. And so I think I actually bought him a sleight of hand here. Because the reshape getting a second bloom is a big deal. And I have four cantrips. Lotus Bloom is the most important card in the deck. All right. Yeah, I'm going to just play my eggs, suspend my bloom. And the Chromatic Sphere plus Sleight of Hand should get the this hand back to functionality. Oh, we're playing against the other Lotus Bloom deck? Sea Chrome Coast is not a card you usually see outside of Ad Nauseam. All right, cool. So found Ghost Quarter. That's part of the combo. OK, so we're actually pretty getting pretty set up here. Oh, Mystic Gate is not an ad nauseum. This is probably just blue eye control. Spreading seas. OK. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Like, it gives me blue mana, which I, I want. OK, so I'm going to make green. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to punish for, for them giving me a blue source. I'm going to get Hallowed Fountain. I was going to cast Edge of Autumn, but now that we drew another land, uh, I think saving that to sack the Ghost Quarter and get the combo active is more important. And I'm just going to reshape this into a Lotus right now. Let's hope they don't play Force of Negation, but they probably do. It sucks you have to play around that card now. <laughs> Modern Horizons was a beating. Back in my day, if your opponent tapped out, you could do what you want. Uh, they're thinking about it. There it is. All right. Pitching to Fairy. So that's probably not bad. Wow, they pitched a Fairy. That must mean they have two, or they don't understand how that works. Because if they have if they play Teferi right now, my Lotus Blooms are stuck in exile. God damn it. Are you this is such a beating. All of my opponents have interacted with me perfectly. Where do they get off? Okay. That is absolutely brutal. Uh and both the force of negation and the Teferi thing leave them in exile so they're not even there for a future open the vaults or anything this sucks this sucks so bad uh, i'm actually gonna cycle my ghost quarter try to get something going here uh, elsewhere flask that can turn my lands into islands for mystic sanctuary I'm not sure if that's helpful. Uh, unless you control three uh, or more islands. Uh, so even if I copy all my stuff, they're not going to be more islands. So I need to spike an untapped blue source off of this. This draw trigger. Uh, I guess the force of negation actually uh, hit reshape, not lotus bloom. So there are still three in my deck. A second ago, I said that two blooms were exiled, but that's not true. Just one. But still, that's one more than I want. Wow, that sucks. Uh, we were actually like pretty well set up to go deep that turn if, if that didn't happen. If one of those two blooms got through, uh, we would be able to cycle float mana, cycle uh, edge of autumn sack and ghost quarter. Uh, Lotus Bloom, 
cast all these eggs, bring those all back. I think we are in Mystic Sanctuaries here with Elsewhere Flask to make my lands islands. I think we were off if they didn't, if one of those two blooms happened. So now they have Cryptic Command up. I don't even think I want to exile this because I have no way to remove a Teferi in the main deck. All right, time to lose the Crypto Command. Uh, I think I want to save the Chromatic Star. All right, which counter spell is it? Yeah, reshape is the only way to get uh, Lotus Bloom into play right now. Yeah, having a way to interact with permanence in the main deck seems like it might be worth doing. All right, so why did that resolve? Um, it's pretty suspicious, but I guess I have to go for it. Like, either they just have nothing, or I'm about to quickly lose the game to a, a counter spell on my face reward. Might as well commit to it. This is going to resolve, or it's not, and that's going to be the game. The Force of Negation at the first reshape. Pitching to Fairy. So, I don't know. Maybe they actually don't have a counter. Eh, we're going to find out. There, there's no way to read that beyond just <laughs> putting my spell on the stack. Yeah, okay. Okay. To Fairy is a huge problem. <laughs> All right, so... I might want Alter the Brood in the deck as an alternate win condition here. Uh, if, if this matchup's going to be slow, then maybe milling them out is fine. Like on the, the fair and square. I need my Echoing Truths. Uh, Teferi. God, I just need every card. Dispel. Pact of Negation. Uh, I'm probably not going to be able to fit all nine of these cards in. All right, so Alter the Brood is back out. Um, so the edges are out. That's four cards out. Eight cards want to come in. I don't think I can cut any of my payoffs. I might have to cut Probe and just commit to comboing. All the way? No, that's crazy. <laughs> what am I even talking about? All right, maybe I just can't bring all these things in. Um, they could totally have Stony Silence after board. Uh, so Teferi checks a lot of boxes. Um, all right, forget about Dispel. Pact of Negation. Teferi, Echoing Truth. Uh, I think that's the package I want to bring in. Got to figure out what else gets cut. Uh, everything serves an important purpose here. Can I go to one bitter ordeal? Is that crazy? I guess it probably is. Cause, but maybe not. Because if they counter... I don't even care if they counter this. Then they don't play discard. They would have to like mill it for me to really lose it. And I still have Mystic Sanctuary. I'm actually going to cut a better ordeal. I am the Mad Lad. Probably going to like draw my deck or not. And there's not much space in between. Then do I cut Sleight of Hand or Elsewhere Flask? Elsewhere Flask is pretty important to turn on the Mystic Sanctuaries. But Sleight of Hand... Making my hand functional is probably more important. 
or Conjurer's Bauble might be worse than Elsewhere Flask. Being one mana is a big deal, but the synergy with the Mystic Sanctuaries is too important. All right, this is what I'm doing. Uh, this hand is very good. Let's see if they let it stay good or if I get destroyed. Uh, I am going to lead on Island Chromatic Star, hoping to draw the second untapped blue source rather than uh, lead on Mystic Sanctuary and guarantee that I can't turn to a reshape. Yeah, it sucks that even on the play, Teferi lines up perfectly with sniping my Lotus Bloom. All right, so let's draw an untapped blue source and reshape. Nice. So we'll start putting them to the counter spell test immediately. This is also why I let on Chromatic Star instead of Bobble. Star has the when it dies trigger, which is separate from all the other effects it has. So, but Bobble drawing the card is part of its effect. Okay, so we have a Lotus Bloom in play. We're already doing better than last game. Let's see if they have the Stony Silence right away. If they do, I'll probably just cast my Psychogenic Probe and hope that their hand is full of fetch lands. Now, they've already gone through two, and they don't really play that many, so that might be a pipe dream. And fetching aggressively. Ooh, Stoneforge Mystic. All right. This is fun. There's suddenly a, a Stoneforge Mystic deck. Let's see if it's Feast and Famine. It is, in fact, Feast and Famine. That is the one I would get to. Good choice, opponent. All right, so Elsewhere Flask draws a card right now. But the Bobbles set up a bigger potential combo turn next turn. Yeah, I'm actually just going to run out both Bobbles. And I'm just putting them into play and leaving them there and playing my Mystic Sanctuary tapped. And we'll see if they have Teferi, if they want to fight over my Lotus Bloom, like what their plan is here. Unfortunately, I don't have a payoff or a protection spell, and I need both, really. Right, they didn't have to ferry, so this at least gets to go on the stack. Now it's time to see if we can make something happen here. Put reshape on the bottom of my deck. Leave as many baubles in there as I can. Uh, chromatic sphere. Cycle for blue. Found a land. I'm not sure if I want to play my land yet. Um, elsewhere flask. Let's draw a card. Okay, so I can fetch for Mystic Sanctuary now, uh, but I don't have any spells in the graveyard, so that doesn't even matter. I guess I have to bobble my other bobble away just to draw a card. Found Reshape. What does that do? Probably nothing. Um, I can reshape Elsewhere Flask into something <laughs> it's not even good uh i the one turn i have game i have my man under me i'm also just whiffing so i could spend a lotus bloom to reshape elsewhere flask into a star 
and just draw another card. I guess I kind of have to do that. All right, sack this into a chromatic star. Uh, they're thinking about countering this. All right, chromatic star. And then I have to play my land. I guess I should fetch just to maximize my, my chances here. I don't want to put anything on top of my deck. So I got to make white. I mean, there's Teferi. I think, though, that passing the turn is going to be better. Like, just play this Teferi as a test spell in the future. Yeah, I'm not going to waste my Lotus Bloom right now to get Teferi into play. I can discard this island to the sword. The sword also, equipping the sword also taps them low. Oh no, it doesn't. I'm so dumb. The text on this card is when it hits, you untap all your lands. So nope, they will not be tapped low. They will not be brought down by, by me and my shenanigans. Uh, I'm actually going to discard Psychogenic Probe, not my island. Because land drops are important against control decks, and if I can open the vaults in the future anyway, it's not a big deal. So, Pact of Negation would actually be a pretty sweet draw here. Now I have enough mana to pay for a pact. And if this Teferi resolves, then I don't have to worry about a lot of other stuff they might do. Another reshape. All right, Teferi. And I have to jam Teferi. It's not like I can try to take, spend time sculpting my hand because they have Sword of Feast and Famine. I'll just have to discard my hand eventually. So at this point, I need actual open the vaults. Like, I don't even have enough permanents to get velocity against. Should I reshape for the third, for the, the next Lotus? I don't think so. Uh, I guess I should have because I'm discarding this anyway. Oh, yeah, th this deck is very much a uh, kind of a glass cannon. Uh, we've seen it fold to Eidolon of the Great Rebel in the main deck, to Fairy in the main deck, one counter spell in the main deck. Oh, big to Fairy. Yeah, we're done. Okay. We've been really close. Like, despite not being able to go off yet, I hope you've been able to see, like, the lines, like, how close we've been. We'll, we'll go off eventually. All right, we're on the draw against some sort of Luris deck that's already on six. I'm going to keep this. Ghost Quarter is totally fine as your one land in a hand like this uh, with double star or double sphere, sleight of hand. We're going to see a lot of cards with this hand. Uh, now we find out if they're Burn or Death Shadow. It's looking like Shadow right now. Uh, this hand is not super susceptible to a discard spell. Like They just take the reshape, I think, is pretty obvious. But uh, every card in this hand is a cantrip. Like, draws a card, draws a card, draws a card, draws a card, draws a card. So they, they strip the reshape, which is the one thing that's different here. And then we just rebuild with what's left over. And they did multi six, so uh, hopefully we can uh, get these cards active before the opponent presents us with a giant deadly death shadow. Uh, 
they're probably trying to figure out what my deck does because I think this is an easy choice. Unless they have multiple discard spells, like taking a chromatic sphere. Like if their hand is like, okay, yeah. So they must have another discard spell because taking a one drop makes more sense if they are not if they can just take the two drop next turn. Or they might be trying to like color screw me. Like seeing the one colorless land uh, is kind of interesting. Like they might just be banking on I can't cast the reshape. Oh, bold strategy. We'll see how it pays off for them. All right, where are we going now? Is it more discard? Is it a threat? Uh, Tarmogoof, okay. Uh, there's pretty likely to be an artifact in the graveyard for that next turn. Okay, drew, drew my six drop, no problem. So I'm gonna make green. In case I draw a land, I wanna cast this Edge of Autumn. Nice. All right, so cast Edge of Autumn. I'm going to get an island. OK, that was, wasn't too bad. Now we just got to be alive in a couple turns. Working from a healthy 20 life, uh, it's up to them to disrupt me at this point. Uh, the I, if I draw a land, I can reshape this turn. I don't get to draw a card out of it, but at least it does protect the reshape from discard in the future. And that sets up open the vaults for the following turn. Open the vaults, slightly awkward because they're probably a Mishra's Bobble deck. <laughs> Not that I think that them drawing one card next upkeep is going to be better than what I'm doing when we I cast open the vaults. Oh, is this just an aggro battle rage? Oh no, it, it's bolt to get an instant in the graveyard. Okay. And they bolt targeted themselves. Yeah, making way for death shadow for sure. All right, time for some fireworks. Uh, either they kill me next turn, or I think I can win on the turn after that. All right, sleight of hand, probably the right place to start. Uh, I guess playing sphere just lets me see more cards. And keep up blue mana. All right, flooded strand. That's good. So I can slight another land or another reshape. I think the redundant reshape is better. And then I'm going to fetch for. Oh, that's actually tough. Um, Let's see, four, five, six. They need to come up with 10 damage next turn. If I fetch, it makes it nine. A fetch land's worth three damage. A team or battle rage is worth six. So fetch land, team or battle rage is lethal. When, if I don't fetch, it would not be lethal. But using my mana the most efficiently. Yeah, I think I need to get this elsewhere flask into play. Okay, uh, now don't kill me. So land, oh shit, I need a blue source. No, I can ghost quarter my own land and get a blue source. 
and then open the vaults. I don't know. This is close. All right, Inquisition. We have the redundant reshape. Inquisition can't take open the vaults. So if I float black, ghost quarter my swamp, that's blue, blue, reshape with a black floating. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah, I can open the vaults next turn. As long as I get to keep one of these reshapes and open the vaults. If they also have Thoughtseize, I lose. Okay, they're just not even going after the reshape because they can't take them both. This is very, very close, and I'm excited about it. And this open the vaults isn't even like lethal. It's just going to be a bunch of eggs, and then we got to make it work from there. Uh, so they're attacking for nine. I'm at six, so I'm dead on board. All right, let's do this thing. Uh, drew an island. That's okay. I play five of those. So I believe I've done this math already. I'm going to ghost quarter my land. Yes, I would like to search. I would like to get an island. Then I can blue, blue to reshape. this into a lotus bloom get the bloom and then if i ghost quarter that's one two three four five six i think i want to quarter my planes also uh, that's just more dead permanence for uh faith's reward and it ends up being the same amount of mana Uh, I probably want to get Island in case... Oh, no, I have Elsewhere Flask, so I don't have to worry about that. So, four, five, six. Let's open these vaults. Oh, sh that's kind of dangerous. Uh, they could just kill me uh, with Seal of Fire if I open have to open the vaults. But I only play two of those, so that's fine. All right, time to draw cards. Um... I think that reshaping Elsewhere Flask into uh, another, or maybe I should bobble open the vaults first. Let's get more information. All right, Star. Uh, how do? What does Star do? Uh, I the the only goal right now is to find the uh, face reward. So if I Lotus Bloom, use Lotus Bloom to reshape Elsewhere Flask into Lotus Bloom, that nets one mana. And Elsewhere Flask doesn't do much when it's in play. So putting it in the graveyard is fine. So blue, 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 reshape. Uh, Done. Sacrifice you into a Lotus Bloom. All right, and then it's time to draw some cards with these spheres. White. All right, I already have my land drop, unfortunately. Make white. Uh oh. Sack a land to cycle this. Faced reward, come on. Oh no. 
Is there any way out of this now? I only have four mana. Yeah, I think I I just whiffed. That's that's all there is to it. Uh, I don't have my land drop for Mystic Sanctuary. So I'll... I guess I'll Chromatic Star to keep it going, but uh, there is nothing else going here. Uh, yeah, that's not helpful. Uh, just a little bit too much pressure. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> so many fireworks. Yeah, a little too much pressure from the the creatures. Um, is this an Angel's Grace matchup? I don't think so. Like, that seems like it's for combo decks. Uh, Ley lines are definitely coming in. That might be all that's coming in. Uh, like Dispel doesn't matter. Echoing Truth could buy me some time, but that's not really what I care about specifically here. All right, I think that this is what I want to do. Uh, or they could have Collector Oof, so I should probably respect that a little bit. Uh, Echoing Truth, probably better at doing that. Psychogenic Probe won't take much to kill them based on the fact they're a Death Shadow deck. And what are the cuts? We're back here again. Uh, they are a discard deck, so I don't want to send my... get rid of a bit or a deal. I'm bringing in Leyline of Sanctity, but I'm not going to like mulligan to it. I just want it available. Uh, so I think the... Elsewhere Flask, and maybe it just is Bitter Ordeal. Okay, this is my plan. Yeah, give me a Lotus Bloom and a Ley Line. All right. Ask and you shall receive. So this hand needs eggs. But it does have the bloom, the payoff, and protection. All right, so I'm going to fetch Hallowed Fountain at the end of their turn. Hopefully they have a fistful of discard. That's no good right now. Can't even bobble me. Bobble yourself. And thought sees yourself while you're at it. I hope they don't have like Monastery Swift Spear, just some way to pressure me anyway. Alright, they don't have Swift Spear. They're fetching in combat. Is that just so they can have six on my turn? Or like, what's going on here? Alright. Alright, Hallowed Fountain. Yeah, it's kind of crazy last game. I'm thinking about it, how easily we would have won if we had Faith's Reward instead of Open the Vaults. Like That just would have been a much better thing by a lot. Okay, uh, now I need an artifact. Yeah, so with the uh, reshape, face reward, lotus bloom, mystic sanctuary, I think I'm a ghost quarter away from, or I I need ghost quarter and a bobble for the infinite combo. Ooh, no land, no spell. 
just bolt yourself in my end step and pass the turn. I wish more of my opponents would do that. So my opponent, uh, sometimes the Death Shadow decks have Blood Moon, uh, but I don't think this one does because they're Jund, not uh, Rakdos. And they also have still have Luris as their companion. When they board in Blood Moon, they have to get rid of their Luris. Okay, so their hand obviously contains Death Shadow. It would suck if we just whiff for not drawing a uh, any bobble in this game. All right, Soul Guide Lantern, exile each opponent's graveyard. That doesn't target. So Leyline will not protect me from Soul Guide Lantern. So that they've actually found an effective way to stop me from comboing. But I do have the Echoing Trees in the deck. How about a Bobble? Just give me an egg. Or not. Whatever. Uh, I could reshape Lotus Bloom into another Lotus Bloom and cast Faith, Faith Reward and then Mystic Sanctuary to put it on top. But then I'm in the same position for next turn, which, which is basically nothing good going on. I can't even hard cast the second ley line because I don't have double white. Uh, is there any value to? Yeah. Oh, the, so the the bottleneck I'm running into right now is that Lotus Bloom being my only artifact, like. I can't reshape it into an egg and also cast Faith's Reward this turn. I just don't have enough mana for that. Okay, I guess I'm just playing land go. The good news is, though, that they have been mana screwed this whole game. So if they want to leave up the activation of Soul Guide Lantern, that is going to like effectively Rashad and port them uh, so they can't spend their mana. And if it gets desperate enough, they might just have to pop Lantern to draw a card. All right, they they realize that that's not a winning play. How about a bobble? You're killing me, deck. So, uh. I'm just doing the same math I was doing last turn again, but this time with one extra mana. So I reshape into Bobble, three mana. I'm still one short. So I'm going to play the Swamp, pass the turn, and hope that they tap out again. Yeah, we, we've managed to somehow fall pretty far behind in this game. So just drawing an egg would be pretty great. It does cost one. Oh no, they just have to sack it. <laughs> it costs one to draw a card. No, they're actually totally fine and I'm completely fucked. All right. Uh... Now what the hell am I going to do? Yeah, th this has just gone so unbelievably badly. After that great start. Uh, so I can... I guess if I do the reshape for a bobble, sack the bobble, that'll at least force the Soul Guide Lantern. It's that or try to draw a an Echoing Truth. Uh, let's see. I did bring in the Echoing Truths. So I, I don't want to crack this fetch land until I'm playing Faith Reward in that same turn. Uh, Interesting stuff here. Uh, I can 
I, I guess I just have to pass the turn again. So much mana, nowhere to go. Yeah, so I basically have to force this Soul Guide activation somehow. And then combo off while I'm still alive. Which is a big ask. All of it is a big ask. That Soul Guide Lantern saying each instead of target. Just getting me so good here. Maybe I'll bolt yourself for four extra damage. You take three, I take four. Generally, or I take seven. All right, so I am kind of dead on board. Echoing truth, maybe? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so, five, six. I'm dead to mostly everything. Uh, fetching now makes me dead to literally everything. I'm already dead to mostly everything. I guess I'll reshape this lotus. Ooh. Have I been miscounting this whole time? Uh, one, two, three, four. No, no, I, I've been doing it right. All right. So I have to reshape the lotus. into a bobble, a sphere. So I need to reshape the lotus into a sphere. They need to not do one damage to me. Oh good, there you are, right on time. Um, so I can fetch for a basic. Then play Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, let's see if this forces the Activation? Nope. They didn't fall for it. Alright, now they're going to activate and then I am dead to everything. Uh, yep, there they go. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see if they have a spell, I guess. Well, Thoughtseize targeting myself is lethal. Yep, all right. Disappointing. <laughs> I'm doing my best for you. Oh, my opponent revealed their hand. Look how good Leyline of Sanctity was. It took... It was basically you discard four. But then we just flood it out instead of drawing anything helpful, so it didn't didn't matter. On the play for round four, I really am trying to go off at least once for for the people. Uh, I am going to keep this hand. It has reshape and a bunch of baubles. Opponents on six. Maybe if they maul to one, I'll have a chance. But their one card will just be Stony Silence anyway, so maybe not. The way this league has been going. Alright, so I'm going to get Hallowed Fountain. Chromatic Sphere. Let's go. Castle Garenbrig. Alright, so there's some sort of Primeval Titan deck. 
Uh, I'm going to make green in case I draw a land for Edge of Autumn, and I did not, of course. Uh, so I'm going to play Bobble, actually, because that draws a card right now. Put Flooded Strand in the deck, and whiff anyway. Okay, cool. Spun my wheels a lot, didn't get anywhere. Our turn 2 Lotus Bloom is now getting smashed by a turn 2 Amulet of Vigor. Nice. Alright, so they're going to cast Primeval Titan next turn. Oh, for sure. Uh, welcome to the party, Lotus Bloom. Thanks for showing up. All right, so let's see how bad this Primeval Titan is. Uh, do they have the win the game combo, or do they just have Field of the Dead? And not that I think we can come back from Field of the Dead either. Dryad. Okay, so they we could just die to Valaku right now. Oh, Breeding Pool is not the uh Simic Growth Chamber again. So I I guess they don't need it because they can still just activate Garen Brig. Alright. <laughs> wow, what a hand. So what our opponent is doing right now is highlighting why you don't see eggs anymore. Um Modern has become an extremely efficient I mean it always has been pretty efficient. It's an eternal format, but uh just the engines that people are doing like the thing my opponent is doing right now is more reliant than what i'm doing easier to pull off takes less cards happens faster and is more deterministic to win the game when it actually does occur so they just search for two valakuts right now and i'm literally dead okay cool even if i didn't miss my land drop uh, i think i still just easily easily lose that game Okay, um, what can I do? Uh, I guess Leyline can stop Valakut. So maybe I have to at least do that. And then other than that, I don't know what I can do. In like, I could cast, even if I could get a bit of a deal for like, four before they have a primeval titan that's something i would like to play first so i have the ley line but not really anything else i'm gonna mulligan this all right i'd rather have a reshape hand than a ley line hand so i'm gonna send it's gotta be ordeal all right i'll send ordeal to the bottom All right, so I can play Chromatic Sphere, which maximizes reshape in the future, or I can play Chromatic Star, which maximizes spiking the blue source off the top. I'm going to play to win and play Chromatic Star. The difference is that if I reshape Star, I get to draw a card. But if I uh, Sphere, that draws a card when you activate it. All right, uh, maybe I just need to keep up this Ghost Quarter to make sure I don't die next turn. Or maybe not. I don't know if they can kill me next turn. No respect. All right, uh, here's Chromatic Sphere. And I'm going to sack this for blue in case I draw Sleight of Hand. Oh, that was bad. I probably just need... Oh, I, I needed to leave that in place so I could have blue next turn for Chromatic Star. I got excited and just kept casting spells. Yeah. Alright, let's hope I don't lose because I le didn't leave up Ghost Quarter. Oh, I probably am going to. The Sakura Tribe Stout here. So, how does this work? They play... Dryad. 
they play Dryad and then that's still only four mana this turn. Okay. Yeah, if I had just left up Ghost Quarter, none of this would be possible. Uh, what do they need? Another Dryad to keep making land drops? Okay, Azusa, yep. If I had left up Ghost Quarter, I would have easily won this game, I think. Okay. They didn't Primeval Titan me. That's good news. Right, sleight of hand. Uh, I think that sleight of hand and then sack bobble to shuffle sleight of hand back into my deck is my best line this turn. Okay, so I can take this island so I can reshape for a lotus in the future, or I can take the lotus and try to last that long, but I don't think I'm going to last that long. So I'm going to take the island. I'm going to bobble sleight of hand back into my deck. And I'm going to cast this other bobble. So now I'm holding up Ghost Quarter. That can pick off that Simic Growth Chamber. So let's just hope they don't have two green Karoo lands. All right, let's see. Moment of truth. So they have uh, four mana or three mana now instead of infinite. And by infinite, I mean like six, or I guess it's more than that. Uh, they have four land drops, five land drops, times two, ten. Yeah, it would have been ten mana. They still have Primeval Titan, despite my best efforts here. Woof. Yeah, that's nasty. And they get the Valakut and the other thing, and they get... And I have literally died on turn three through a Ghost Quarter. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Franklin. I have not won a single game for you yet. But I'm on the draw in the final round with a solid hand. But I've kept solid hands before. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, I, I think the reality of this deck, unfortunately, is just that Modern is a lot faster and more reliable than this deck uh, is able to muster. Uh, a Birds of Paradise deck on the play, so we could be facing down Infinite Life on turn three, which is fine. We can beat Infinite Life. Kind of hope that is their plan. Uh, I would prefer that over them casting Stone Rain right now. Fuck my life. All right. So we're playing against Ponza. Uh, this is a deck we might be able to beat. Though I've said that before, too. Um, this is actually kind of an interesting spot of play the fetch land to make sure that I can... Yeah, I'm actually just going to do that. I'm playing the fetch land instead of my bobbles because uh, this plays around stone rain and that gives me more mana in the future. All right, no play go. Uh, that makes me think they have more stone rains in their hand. All right, well, I'm not going to not make a land drop. That's not how this works. And they can't really cast two stone rains in a turn, so I'm going to fetch and play out another bobble as well. Uh, I'm going to get... I think I want blue. I just want to 
and I'm going to cycle this to first light of hand. I'm looking for the the faith's reward now. All right, reshape can get a second bloom, which might be important if they're attacking my lands. That's weird. That was clearly their draw for the turn, or they would, would have played it last turn. So they kept a hand that cast turn two stone rain and then doesn't do anything else. Suspicious activity over there. So I have a pretty decent chance at winning if I find a, a payoff in the next turn or two. Is this just like Shatter, like Ancient Grudge, my Lotus Bloom? All right, Abrade my Lotus Bloom. Uh, that's fine, I have a backup. So I'm gonna reshape my, my star into a Bloom. And this gives me a chance to draw a Faith Reward right now. Oh, didn't do it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I couldn't be so lucky. Uh, and then I'll play out this other star. So at this point, yeah, we're just looking for the payoff. And we're all dressed up. Please don't play Collector Roof. Uh, some format. Are you sh fucking kidding me? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> this league has been a disaster. <laughs> All right, they're a car in the Great Creator deck. Great. So that hand was 100% up to me to lose uh, like the deck just needed to draw the payoff and it would have been fine but did not draw the payoff so it was not fine okay uh, I'm gonna bring in the echoing truce uh, I don't want the Teferi I think this is all I can do I guess Teferi is good against like collector oof but you don't need that if you have Karn Now, I guess I'm going to keep this. Uh, it doesn't have the bloom, but it does have the payoff. It has the sideboard card. Need to find a bloom. This has been a nightmare. My opponent's on four. Maybe maybe that's what I need to actually win a game. Uh, though, I, we, we can pretend I've just been super unlucky. And there's been a couple spots where I feel like I've gotten a little unlucky. But in general... Uh, the number of single cards that this deck folds to is just too high. Like we lost straight up to Eidolon of Rhetoric. We lost straight up to Karn the Great Creator. Lost straight up to Soul Guide Lantern. Like, are you like, come on? Uh, so uh, I, I think that this is just not a power level, modern power level deck. Unfortunately, sorry, Franklin. Okay, there's a Bloom. Better late than never. We have an egg. Starting to come together. Uh, they are untapping into three mana, though, assuming they have another land drop. So let's see how this goes. We have the Ghost Quarter, the Face Reward. And the engine's online here if we're not dead before they, they do it. Oh, they could Karn this turn. That's so fucked up. At least I have Echoing Truth this time. All right, there's Karn. Karn is wishing for... Yeah, that's that would, would have been my guess. Um, I think... Like, do I Ghost Quarter their Utopia Sprawl? And then bounce Karn. Like, what is the best 
way out of this game. They're going to start nuking my lands next turn. Uh, maybe I just play Ghost Quarter. And so if they cast Liquid Metal Coating, okay, I, I'm just going to pass the turn like this. The most important thing is that Karn isn't in play on the turn my Lotus Bloom resolves. So, okay, I don't care about Clothis at all. Uh, if I Ghost Quarter now, then they don't get to Liquid Metal Coating this turn. Uh, yeah, that sounds kind of important. Uh, so I'll just hit that now. They have one mana instead of two to work with this turn. Hopefully they don't just make a land drop from hand. Fuck my life. So now uh, they can destroy one of my lands. I still think that letting them destroy my land is better than bouncing Karn right now. Because if they just replay it next turn... Yeah, uh, so I, I have to play my Watery Grave untapped. All right, so I'm ready with my Echoing Truth. So I have to somehow maneuver this Karn out of play, but I don't know that I actually can do that. Uh, what are they targeting? Liquid Metal Coating, targeting Liquid Metal Coating? Oh, I think they just misclicked. I'll take that. <laughs> play to your outs, right? Okay, so they coding to their own coding instead of my land. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how we win? Uh, I guess it'll depend on what they wish for. Do they have like a Trinisphere or something fucked up that I can't beat? Chalice of the Void. Um, so they're going to Chalice on one. That's pretty good. Oh, they're going to Chalice on two. Uh, that's even better. Uh so I'm going to bounce Karn right now. So they Chalice on two. That doesn't actually stop what it needs to. Like cycling isn't a spell. So I, I'm going to get to do something next turn. We'll see if it's actually any good. I think Chalice on zero just to keep that Lotus Bloom out of play would have been safer. All right, the, the magic gods have lined up here. Uh, my opponent misclicked and then also misplayed. So now is my chance. If this deck's going to perform, this is its opportunity. So I'm going to cast this bobble. OK, uh, bobble. Put Echoing Truth, or no, put Ghost Quarter back into my deck. Um, elsewhere Flask is not what I'm looking for here. Uh, not yet, anyway. Uh, it, it gets countered, so that's a, a good reason not to do it. Um, I'm going to cycle Edge of Autumn, sacking my Watery Grave, probably. I find, found Polluted Delta. That's good, because that can find the Mystic Sanctuary for the future. So I'm going to play my Delta. I'm going to want that eventually. Uh, oh, if I fetch, I get it back immediately. So I'm going to fetch for a basic island. And then 
I'm going to turn my lands into islands. And I get at least one. I'm going to go at least two rounds with this phase reward. Uh, yes, I'll pay two life. Draw a card. Reshape. Okay. Reshape is good. Uh, I get to fetch again. This time I'm going to get basic island. Uh, I get to go one more round. Uh, and I think I'm actually pretty close to going off here. So reshape. Oh, I need to pay more than that. Uh, because of chalice. Uh, X or less. So I can pay one extra to still get the Lotus Bloom. Uh, I'm going to put Edge of Autumn back in my deck. All right, open the vaults. Pretty nice. So one, two, three mana. Okay. Uh, going to reshape Elsewhere Flask into a Lotus Bloom. And then we go uh, white, 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 white. Uh, might as well put Elsewhere Flask in the graveyard. Uh, it's going to get countered from the battlefield. So uh, face reward doesn't bring it back. All right, maybe I should be saving my mana. Wait, 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 wait. I guess mono white is fine. All right, face reward again. If I get up to open the vaults, then the Elsewhere Flask is good. Uh, so Elsewhere Flask is about to draw a card. Um, in response, I will fetch for Mystic Sanctuary. Put Face Reward on top. Okay, then I draw Face Reward and bobble this other Face Reward into my deck. Found another bobble. Okay. We're doing stuff. Stuff is happening. I found Ghost Quarter. Unfortunately, I can't get it into my graveyard. That would be pretty great. Uh, so, make my lands into islands. Then, white, 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 white. Reward my faith. I've had so much faith. I am 0 and 8, 0 and 9 with this faith so far. Have I been faithful enough? Now I need a bitter ordeal. Uh, I, I've done what I can to get this far. Uh, the. These baubles are getting kind of awkward because they're putting cards back into the deck that I don't actually want in my deck. All right, Echoing Truth, not bad. And I guess I'll put this island back in my deck because the Pluto Delta. All right, face another face reward. I'm still going to make these into islands. We're getting up to the the open the vaults pretty close at this point. Actually, maybe I should be opening the vaults first because that gets an extra elsewhere flask into the mix. All right, another star. Uh, so I actually am going to take my own advice there. And I guess I, sh I should just be shuffling these in at this point. All right, Edge of Autumn, nice. Sack of Land. I get to sack Mystic Sanctuary. Now the loop is, the, the hooks are all the way in now. Then put Edge of Autumn back in my deck. That's something I actually want to do. And then I cast this Elsewhere Flask. It gets countered. But that's okay because I'm going to open the vaults for even more. Name islands. 
sack this for white. Uh, they don't have any artifacts in their graveyard I need to worry about. Yeah, if they had like a chalice sitting in their graveyard, I would actually be super worried. White, white, white. White, white, white. Open the vaults. Uh, oh, they do have Utopia Sprawl. Never mind. I wonder if they went to get a sandwich. No, they are actually here paying attention. That would be awkward if they just timed out because they f 6 and walked away. So they get to attach their Utopia Sprawl to one of their lands. So I get to draw a card and draw another card. Then bobble Faith's Reward. All right, I guess I want to bobble open. And bobble face reward. Having another reward in my hand just makes that pretty easy. Turn this into blue. I'm so glad this deck isn't viable. I would hate to have to sit here and watch my opponents do this. Alright, so I can reshape. Uh, I actually can't reshape because... Well, I can still reshape, but not into another Lotus because they're all in my hand. Uh, so I'll make blue, blue, blue and reshape one, two, three, reshape one of these flasks into another star. Chromatic star. Then make turn blue into blue with this. Uh, yeah, now we are we are just so far off at this point. Uh, so make white. Now I just need to not fuck it up. Is the only part of this process left. Blue into blue. Faith's reward. Mystic sanctuary puts faith's reward on top. Uh, I did just stack those triggers wrong, but it doesn't matter. I, I can draw a lot of cards. I uh, guess I'll put these back in the deck. Edge of Autumn, great. <laughs> We're running out of uh, space in my hand to, to keep all these cards. White, white, turn white into white. All right, that's another reshape. So now I'll make another blue, turn white into blue, reshape, turn elsewhere flask into another star. Just looking for the ordeal at this point. Another face reward. It'd be hard to fail at this point. Then make these all into islands. Reward my faith some more. I guess I also have to be careful about decking myself. Uh, only two of these ETB triggers are draws, so it's pretty hard to deck myself by accident. Uh, my opponent is clearly pay playing to the clock right now, which I'm not upset about. That is their prerogative. Uh, hopefully I can get a nice psychogenic probe. Uh, line this game. So white, white, blue. There's a reshape. Blue. All right, another reshape. So I have, I can reshape into Psychogenic Probe, but I don't think I want to do that yet. Oh, there's the probe anyway. 
I just need an ordeal. <laughs> there are 18 cards left in my whole deck. Uh, reshape for X is one. There are still artifacts in there. Confirmed. I'll float a black. I, I'm i starting to feel good about drawing bit ordeal soon. Sleight of hand. Find another sleight of hand. That's fine. And then reward. I didn't sack my flask because uh, at this point I'm more worried about time than I am about actually completing my combo. Uh, blue, 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 white, white, white. Sleight of hand. Get another open the vaults. Uh, turn blue into blue. Can't even see my whole hand anymore. Uh, I might time out just doing this. Uh, make black. Cast sleight of hand. Grab this edge of autumn. Cycle edge. All right, there's the ordeal. We did it. All right, psychogenic probe. Oh no. Oh my God. Oh no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, enough permanents have died that that doesn't matter. Oh my God. I thought I just fucked that up. <laughs> All right. We should be have 49 Gravestorm, though Magic Online doesn't count Gravestorm, so you never actually know. Uh, make islands. Make islands. And. I'm going to sack these just for good measure. <laughs> uh, that was scary. And bitter ordeal. 72 permanents. Uh, now I have to resolve all these things. <laughs> that might take uh, the entire seven minutes I have left. Okay, so that's another reason why I wouldn't play this deck, because actually comboing off takes thousands of years. I don't know if there's a way to shortcut this and just say always yes or always same targets. Yeah, I actually needed the probe to save a lot of clicking time. <laughs> Franklin, you're you're a sick man. Uh, this is not something I would choose to do on purpose. Yeah, uh, so with six minutes left on my clock, I can't win this game, even if I combo off immediately next turn, or next game. Like, it just can't be done. Yeah, that sucks so much. <laughs> There's some sick joy to it, but it is also it's no fun at all. all right, so they have a bunch of abrades, Clothis, uh, four Karn, like you'd expect. Pillage, Stone Rain. And then some other stuff. All right, so I actually do need to remember to reshape for Psychogenic Probe. Yeah, so I have to get like a quick Psychogenic Probe next game. Like I, I have six minutes to do this entire combo that just took me like 12 minutes to execute. I hope Magic Online just empties the stack. Uh, once they don't have any cards in their deck and I don't have to click like fail to find or anything. I don't actually know how this works. Exiling uh, 72 cards from a 40 card deck.
Oh god, I have to click OK 30 times. This is a nightmare. There, there might be some Magic Online hotkey for this, but I don't have time to figure out what it is right now. It's OK, 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 OK. All right, they have one card in their hand, no cards in their deck. Go, it's your turn. Oh, I have to go to discard. Come on. To discard. Oh, this is a nightmare. I'm going to time out discarding. Franklin, I'm mad at you. Why would you do this to me? Okay. They're dead. <laughs> We've gotten a victory on the board. Uh, we're not going to get another one. There's not enough time. But we are on board with a win. So... I, I think I just have to... Do I bring in Altar of the Brood? Is that faster or not faster than my other combo? I think it, it's like might be slightly faster. Oh. You know what? Forget it. Same deck right back in. It worked so well last time. I'm just going to have to play really quick and go for Psychogenic Probe early. Keep. All right, so Arbor Elf, uh, they have the turn two Stone Rain lined up against my one lander. But I did not have time to think about not keeping this hand. Got all my, my speed stops set. Oh, do they have the turn two Karn? Looks like it. <laughs> Good news. We didn't need the clock. It's not going to come down to the clock. We're just going to lose to this Karn. Getting Tormod's Crypt. Yeah, that would have made a lot of sense last game too. Instead of Chalice of the Void. Okay, I'm dead. I'm not going to make you all watch that. But we did get to combo once. Uh, I have not 0-5 to League on camera, I don't think ever. So thanks for that, Franklin. Uh, overall, I mean, we saw it in action. I've been talking about it the whole time. Uh, this, this deck, you need a lot to go right. It takes a long time to combo if you do combo. It's like a turn slower than modern in general. And it's dead on so many axes, like Chalice of the Void. Lidalon of Reverick, Karn the Great Creator, Tormod's Crypt, just uh, Dead to Graveyard Hate, Dead to Dead to Cryptic Command, and uh, uh, Force of Negation that one game. So loses to a Counterspell, loses to a Discard Spell, loses to uh, any sort of hate-based permanent, any Null Rod effect, any Tormod's Crypt effect. Uh, th this deck, I don't know what metagame this would thrive in, but it is certainly not the currently existing modern metagame. So, uh, Franklin... Thank you for the deck. Uh, I don't mind going on a wild ride once in a while. Uh, sorry, I couldn't muster a single match win for you. But I don't even know if it's possible to muster a match win given the Magic Online time constraints. Uh, I guess if I had committed to Psychogenic Probe faster, maybe. I, I don't know. But <laughs> this deck was an adventure, one that I will not be repeating. And thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're a true hero. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.